This topic is a really sensitive one, actually, and it can damage, it can destroy friendships, relationships. Um, and that's because race always comes to play in many things, or even cultures, you know, blacks and Jamaicans and Nigerians have always had this little clash, small islanders, big islanders. But the old age white woman stealing the black man has always, you know, come in my world. And I think it's time that we, for me, I'd like to clarify and that my direction of challenge, if any, isn't about the white woman herself. I think a woman, generally white, black, yellow, whatever, should be able to love whomever she wants to love. I think love has no colour, love has no boundaries, love has no descriptors. But it's only when you make an active choice to neglect either your race or any other race, really. And I don't know if I particularly make an active choice whether I say to myself, oh, I'm not going to date someone that is Japanese today. No, I don't. I think that the heart is the heart. And if I met a Japanese Donny that I found was a Chungting and I loved him, well, why not? But I think in terms of the black woman and her struggle, sometimes dealing with a white man and wondering what his intentions are, I don't think we've got there yet. We don't understand it. There's not enough that have happened. There's not enough of those relationships that have happened to make us feel secure. But what has happened more is the black man and the white woman. And I want to say that it's not the issue that I have with the white woman. It's with the black man and his choices and his active disdain for his own race, where he doesn't see his own culture as beautiful and attractive and worthy and worth the effort and the time. It's never the fact that, you know, oh, you've stolen my man. Not at all. I think we need to stop thinking of the white woman as the aggressor or the person that has gone out of her way to steal your men. Number one, they ain't our men anyway. Half of them, I don't even want them, let me tell you. Um, But it's it's about, I think, the hurt that comes with the relationship. So it's not the individual. It's not the white woman that may be walking around with a black man and we're looking at her with jealousy or um, condemnation or victimization. It's about how did this happen to our race so much so that the black man sometimes doesn't find his own people attractive anymore. I'm not saying a black man is not um, able to have his own choice. Everybody's able to have his own choice. But as I said, when it's an active choice, to discriminate from your own race, I think that's when the pill is harder to swallow. So I have to say that my attention has never been on the woman, but of the man. It's like when you're in a relationship and your man cheats on you, but yet you want to go and fight down the girl. Why do you want to go and fight the girl for? She ain't done nothing to you. Well, sometimes she's actively gone and sought your man, but even still, it's your man that should be the one that decides yes or no, I'm going to cheat on you. So as in the situation that we're dealing with in this podcast is mixed relationships, why am I out here trying to, as Becky said, challenge the woman who is white and appreciates black culture and embraces black cultures and likes black music and likes to go to carnival and likes to to twerk if that's seen as a black thing? You know, why, why is that a problem? I see it as appreciation. I see it as really embracing all that we are glorified for, all that we are good at. You know, I see imitation as a compliment. I see when somebody else wants to be like me, that's a compliment. And I would hope not that in 2020, there are people openly being discriminatory to white women who choose to be with black men. That's their choice. And that, for me, isn't the issue. So my intention of this pod is to clarify that when I ask challenging questions about the motivations of English white women to seek relationships out of their race, it isn't for, um, it's not to be defensive. It is merely to, to wonder what life is like on your side. I am not white, I've never been. So I will always ask questions that sometimes present as uncomfortable And it's with no other means but education, because these conversations mean that knowledge is power. 
the more we know, the more we do. The better we know, the better we can do. That's where I go, really. And that's what I'm about here. So this week, we decided to talk about a really controversial issue, um, and that's mixed race relationships. And I think, you know, when you grow up as a black woman, it's at the forefront of your mind. And as you know, it's in a lot of my discussions, I talk about race, because race is what's important to me, it's who I am. I am a person that has endured hardship because of my race, injustice because of my race, discrimination because of my race, and I will continue to do so until I leave this earth. But one of the areas that I thought really to touch on was um, my own black men and their decision to date out of the race, but not the decision. It's when a black man actively goes out of his way to date someone that's not black. That's what bothers me. And one of the other areas that I really struggle with is when a black man decides to have a relationship with a woman outside of his race, let's say a white woman, for example, and I have many white friends. I'm not that white person. Oh, I like, I'm not racist because I've got black friends. I am telling you that I do have white friends. I appreciate them. However, one of my struggles is when a black man, as I said, decides to date outside of his race and then ignore me. Many of us black women have experienced, you're walking down the road, walking down Brixton High Road, and particularly five years ago, maybe five, ten years ago, when it wasn't so, you know, on telly every five minutes, but a black man's with his white woman, holding hands, walks towards you, and he can't look you in your face. That's a problem for me. Firstly, it's a problem because black men typically, when they're with black women back in them days, didn't hold hands so that already gets my back up I ain't even gonna lie because you know how many black couples did you used to see black men walking proudly with their black women holding hands and doing public displays of affection whereas now it's so common so they're out there hugging and kissing in public and that's our problem there's certain things that black men will do with women outside of the black race that they will never do with a black woman that's what hurts and I think the message has to be clear it's not hate for the white woman or the Asian woman or the whatever woman it's our men who are born and bred from the same cloth as us that choose to treat us differently because we are black so I've known relationships where my white counterparts who date black men the level of treatment that they get, the level of flexibility, the level of interest in doing different things, even to the level of expectation. A black man tends to have a almost a slave-like, in my opinion, again, my opinion, attitude to his woman. So this black woman must cook, she must clean, she must be able to throw down, she must be able to work, she must be able to look after the kids, she must be able to do all of this. But when he's in a relationship with a white woman, the expectation is, oh, woman, she might not know how to cook good or she might not. That's how we feel. Whether that be true or not, I'm going to give you a perspective from how we feel. The expectation of being this almost image of your mum or your grandma that's been able to throw down oxtail, rice and peas, coleslaw from scratch. It's not the same. The expectations are different. And that's what's her treats us with the same level of respect of appreciation of flexibility of passion that you do with a woman outside of your race that's my expectation sometimes I think I'm a bit of a poet so I wrote a little poet a little poet I wrote a little poem that's it a little poem and I have called it dear Mr black man So it starts. Dear Mr. Blackman, when you're holding hands with Tracy or Becky, there is no need for your eyes to avoid mine and drop to the floor. You made the choice to cross over, so your walk needs to be sure. Be confident in your decisions to choose a path that your mum, dad, brother or sister may not agree. Take it with boldness and desires to caress what could be seen as the enemy. But it's not an issue to me because I have a degree, a knowledge and understanding and freedom of decisions that you could date 
whatever your isms and schisms. And just because I'm not the flavor, you decide to eat. There are others out there that think I'm indeed a treat. To treat with kindness and love and respect, regardless of my color. To treat me good and love me, no matter what the weather. To stroke my hair that may lay not so soft under my very strong regal crown. So look me in my eyes, for on this face you will not see a frown. Instead, you will see a woman who is proud to know that another of my kind is being loved. Black, white or mixed or both is the same blessings we receive from above. So dear Mr. Black man, whose choice is to love white, look at me with confidence as I will never be out of sight. And that's what I need my black men to understand, the impact that their decisions have on the people that look like them. Just consider it. So do what you're doing, but do it with pride. Don't be ashamed. Don't hide your your partner of another race. Don't forget about your race. Ensure that your children, who are of mixed heritage, know your race, know your food, know your culture. I do have a fear that, you know, one day my race will become eradicated. And do I get cross when I see adverts with every family being mixed? Yeah, I do, you know, because that's not the reality. And even though the Sainsbury's advert caused so much drama, the reality is that there are so many full black families. And why isn't that okay? Why is it not okay to publicize a black man fell in love with a black woman and had black children and they will have black grandchildren and black great grandchildren? See, my mum was black, my dad was black, my sister's black, my grandma was black. I am not saying my aunts or uncles or cousins haven't had white partners, Asian partners or whatever. But my nuclear family represented what was represented on the gravy ad. A black family, a black mom, black dad, black children. And that should be okay. Why should I be ashamed? It's sad that we have to have these discussions. And this is what causes anxieties and depressions and moods and self-esteem. This is what makes you feel worthy and unworthy when a man of your culture, race, chooses someone else that's normal heartbreak you know I know all too well when someone makes a choice to not be with you anymore that hurts like hell like I can't put it into words how much that hurts when you're not the chosen one granted you know there are studies that I've read that look at black women and aggressiveness and it was mentioned in the podcast that potentially am I aggressive we as black women, especially in places of work, get stigmatized. And so we have a chip on our shoulder. I get told, oh, black girls have too much attitude. Just like black men, we have come from a history of trauma. I'm not saying white people haven't. We have been publicly shamed by whippings in slavery. We have gone through oppression. We have gone through overt discrimination. The average white person has not had to endure what our heritage has had to endure so yes we come with a chip on our shoulder but what we want is to find and meet someone that will help to smooth the pain to heal our pain to show us that we are worthy of being loved and appreciated for every kink and knot in our hair you know it has taken us years to find makeup that matches our skin A white girl could go into Boots or Superdrug and get makeup just like that from the 70s. There was no shops in the 70s that held black makeup. None. It wasn't until you got Iman and, is it Black Opal? No, that came in the 80s. There was another one, Fashion Fair. And even then, the colours were off and ashy and really didn't complement our, our our tones whatsoever. We've been very fortunate that black women, such as Rihanna, has brought out a range for us. But it's taken years, like years. We are only now here. I can, I'm a dark-skinned black woman and only in the last five years, 
I've been able to find a shade that matches my shade. Imagine that for most of my teenage years, I was wearing makeup that was not my shade. To the point that you just didn't even bother wearing makeup because it wasn't your shade. And that's the same with size. Me again, as a size 16 woman, it's taken us years for la labels like Fashion Over or whatever to stock our size. For years, I couldn't shop in Top Shop. I couldn't shop in New Look. I couldn't go to Oxford Street when I was in my teenage years to buy clothes that were of my size. I couldn't do it. So imagine that being your struggle on a daily basis, your basic needs to look and feel appealing, to feel successful, to feel desired. It almost comes across that no one desires you because no one is stocking what you need to feel good. No one cares. No one cares. So yes, we do come with attitude. We do come with a bit of aggression. Yeah, granted. Yeah, there's some proper ghetto ones, but there's ghetto ones in every, in every race. But yes, we've got a reason for feeling oppressed and feeling discriminated most of the time, because most of the time, the facts remain that we are. And I'm not saying we should stay in this state of, I wouldn't say feeling sorry for ourselves, but state of oppression. But my point is to emphasize that when you are making your choices, look at it on a whole perspective, a holistic perspective. What has that woman endured to en enable her to be like this? Why does she have this weight on her shoulder? And if you find that, you know what, I'm a, a deep rooted young man that potentially would fall in love with this woman. Why wouldn't you invest in helping her? to ease that pain and that goes back to one of the queries are white women easier to please somebody dm me that the reason why black men choose that is because they can't be bothered it's long to love a black woman because you have to really go out of your way that's a bit racist still because you know what that does that sounds like white women accept anything white women tolerate everything um you can come to them with anything and I don't believe that's the case at all. So I kind of discredit that hypothesis. But I have to say that if you as a white woman are not coming with the baggage that we come with, then yes, we are probably easier to love. And obviously, again, we look at outside relationships and see publicly how these relationships differ. So are they easier? I don't know. I've never been with a white woman, so I can't tell. Yes, I know black men that have been with them. But again, some of the white women that I know my black men are with are white women that are particularly a bit ethnic, you know. So, and now we are in a multicultural um, entertainment industry where cultures are blended publicly. So we all pick up a little bit from each other. You can be a quite urban white girl, you know. So... The white girls are not necessarily the same. Do I have a problem with mixed race people? I don't. Do I have a problem with two people that make a mixed race child? No, because it's about love at the end of the day. And I think that's what the message has to be. Love who you want, but treat everyone fairly. Give everyone the chance. I mean, physically, black women and white women, yes, we're aesthetically different are here particularly and I do question myself and my black sisters when we decide to go for 32 inch long weaves I wonder what that actually means because naturally culturally we will never have 32 inch hair we'll never have 18 inch hair well maybe the likelihood is that you will have a good 12 inch if you really try. Why is it that we seek as black women to have long weaves that are European? Is it that we, like the black men, do not appreciate our authenticity? Do we not appreciate what it is to be a true black woman? Myself, I relax my hair and make it straight. So I sit here not with judgment. I ask myself, 
why do you straighten your hair? I know why I do. Because I am not down on that natural life. It doesn't suit me. It ages me. But also, I like the look of my hair straight. I like the manageability of it. I like the look. So is that why we wear these long ass weaves? Mm, I don't know. And then can we be angry when our black men look at us and think, "Mm, she's not even sure of herself because she is dark and she has this 32 inch weave or wig on her head. We appear confused. I've been on dates with a guy that told me that I was, what did he say? He said, like, I'm a Barbie black girl. I'm not conscious. And as I said, I've asked myself, what does that conscious mean? Because I don't have natural hair. And these are the things that our black men go on dates and tell us. And we wonder why we go home with issues and with anger and aggression, etc. I'm urging us to try outside of our race because what ultimately if we are looking for love and we believe in our higher powers god allah whatever it is that you choose do we know what our future partner looks like what he's wrapped in i don't know if my future partner will be wrapped in white skin i don't know but i am open to getting to know the heart because that's what it's about it's about meeting and getting to know the heart of the person i urge us all to be kind to be kind and love one another regardless of the skin we're in because the heart doesn't have color it beats the same inside of the body that has a cover over it And if we go back to the core of who we are as individuals, we should think about the heart more than we do the skin.